morning welcome back to the greenhouse so this is my second batch of compost tea today is Wednesday I want to apply it on Friday that'll be one week from when I first applied the first batch of compost tea so I'm gonna add as you recall the six cups of compost. I've probably overfilled this reservoir. This is a 30 gallon reservoir. So six cups. I've got eight ounces of the uh, liquid kelp. I'm going to add eight ounces of liquid fish fertilizer. And finally, we'll add eight ounces of molasses. Alright, so basically that's just a recap of my formula. And again, it looks well incorporated, but give it just a little bit here. Okay, that should whoop. Alright. Ooh, that smells funky. All right, let me go ahead and clean up. I'll be right back. All right. I'm going to finish sweeping up in just a minute. <clears throat> So, again, today's Wednesday, <coughs> excuse me, um, I like to let this brew for 48 hours, and that'll bring us back to Friday, which is when I promise to give you guys an update. So I'm going to attempt to give you weekly, every seven day, updates. <coughs> so I needed to make up a fresh batch of compost tea. Uh, I'll be back Friday. And we'll take a look at my vegetables. The, uh, the vegetables in the greenhouse are about at least two weeks behind what I have outside. So the birdies raised garden beds outside were planted with seedlings that were started two to three weeks ahead of what's inside the greenhouse. So uh, Friday we'll take a look at what's outside, inside, and I'll go ahead and put my second application of compost tea down. And uh, from there, we'll go to the next week and see how it's looking. Uh, <clears throat> I can tell you right now, the results look quite remarkable, especially my uh, broccoli rob. Uh, in fact, today, they're overcrowded. They've grown that much in less than seven days. I'm going to harvest some of the outer leaves and I'm going to cook up a little broccoli rob for my lunch today. So while I'm thinning out the uh, plants, I'll be able to harvest some and actually eat some. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and finish sweeping up here, trying to keep up. I still have a lot of organizing to do, but we'll see you back here Friday for our update. All right, we'll see you later. 
back here at the greenhouse. morning welcome back to the greenhouse beautiful sunny Florida zone 9b actually it started out this morning at I think it was 66 degrees outside it's currently 61 in the greenhouse we're about 65 degrees all right so today is Friday Cappuccino, great way to start the day. So we're back. Our compost tea has been brewing for 48 hours. This is the second batch. Today is October 30th and it's about a quarter to nine. I wanted to uh, get started here. So anyway, as promised, this is an update to the compost tea and how it's working. So. Just to recap, I started brewing this batch on Wednesday. It's now Friday. It's 30 gallons, and I started applying it to my beds inside the greenhouse. These are Birdie's raised garden beds. And I've got to put the rest outside. I have six more outside, Birdie's raised garden beds. I have my tomato trellis set up and some of the food forest. So the rest of this will get applied to that area. In just a minute, I'll grab the camera. I'll show you what we've got growing on inside here. Remember, these are several weeks behind what we have outside. Here's a look at the compost tea. And to my good friend in beautiful British Columbia. Yeah, I don't think my neighbors would be too happy with the smell of this either. Okay, here we go. This is Broccoli Rob in a grow bag. I'm going to say that almost doubled in size since last week. So remember, seven days ago, I applied my first application of the compost tea. This is zucchini. I just planted these. They were seeded maybe two weeks ago. So I just put them in soil yesterday. They were in a one gallon grow bag. And here we go into the birdies raised garden bed. So the fennel, which was started from seed, direct sowed, is popping up. No real change there that I can notice. There's my tomato plant. <clears throat> That's a Roma tomato. Uh, it's probably got a third more growth. There are my radishes. I'm not noticing that much of a growth, but a lot of it could be occurring under the soil. Let me come over here to my carrots, and I've got several carrots, several more I should say, that look like they've started to break through the soil. There's another Roma tomato, a little bit of growth, not much. This is more broccoli rob. This was also a direct sowed and a uh, little growth not a lot so hard to tell right there coming over to the next bed we've got fennel now here i'm seeing a little bit better growth but these uh, plants were started in soil blocks so i have fennel swiss chard there's a tomato it's aroma i have a lizard that is enjoying the leaves on it and I've got more fennel, uh, Swiss chard. I do have some beets. I can get that. And there's a pan over to the rest of it. Again, same stuff. Uh, looking healthy, but not a dramatic change in growth. Let's head outside and take a look at what we've got there.
my rosemary, that's my marigold from seed in this bed. I've got some seeds still starting. I have a Roma tomato plant. I have some thyme. That's a broccoli rob, a small tomato plant. This is a rosemary plant that I started from one sprig, got it to root, and I've been trimming it to get it to bush. That's a zucchini, and this has done really well now. So this is actually a San Marzano tomato plant. There's actually two of them. I had cloned these earlier in the year, and they had just been sitting around, and there's a tomato right back in there. I can get it in. So, right there. And I noticed earlier today, we have new flowers right up here. So, it's flowering. And we have uh, new growth coming out of the bottom. This is a thyme plant that's probably two years old. More marigolds. All of this did get an application of the compost tea. Now, back in there, there's a tomato plant. There's another one here. So in between the, uh, the marigold um, planting, tomato plants, there's another. These are all Roma. So again, I'm seeing quite a bit of growth here. There's more marigolds and there's a rosemary plant. And before we get into the other birdie raised garden beds, check this out. This is a prized possession, this plant. This is a black Suriname cherry. Thanks to my buddy Pete over at Green Dreams Sand Hill Farm in Spring Hill, Florida. Yeah, we've gotten a lot of stuff here. So if I can get that to focus in having a hard time there we go so you can see all that new growth and some fruit here's where I think I'm seeing the best results this is the broccoli rob and look at that now just the other day I uh, to thin this out, right? I've obviously overplanted this. I do have radishes growing in here as well. So I <clears throat> think I might have gotten a little carried away here. But anyway, I uh, harvested some of the outer leaves and blanched them in water. That water was then used to cook off some orecchetti pasta. I then sauteed after giving the broccoli robin ice bath some garlic a little italian sausage in olive oil a little splash of white wine and the broccoli rob and had a wonderful lunch so those are the results here again <clears throat> this really has where i could say there's a uh, a remarkable difference in what it was just a week ago let me step back a little now and this is the bed that has the beets so they're the red leaved i do have some swiss chard and uh kale what you doing primo he loves being out here and i do have some insects that are eating on it so we have a lot of lizards here in zone 9b and they love to eat the leaves there's the swiss chard again beets kale you could see the mushrooms coming up, so I had a nice healthy soil. And again, I'm seeing some growth here, so some positive results. Again, this is one week, seven days from my first application of the compost tea. Now it's early in the morning, so I apologize for the lighting. I had not intended on filming this update at this time, but I do have to help a neighbor out but this is a carambola this is a star fruit again i got it from my buddy pete over at green dreams that's what's growing on pete look at all that now i did put the compost tea here too don't know if it's appropriate or not but i figured what the heck there's the mexican sunflower that's part of our chop and drop so you cut that down and you drop it at the base of your fruit trees this is a uh, pagoda that I just ripped out of the ground and put it in a pot so one of our neighbors will get it. 
There's another moringa. That's an avocado. So I put an application of the compost tea down here. I do have some weeds I need to pull out. And uh, a lot of this is tree mold. So you can see the root and all comes right out. Very easy. And also marigold. So these were transplanted. I've got a tomato plant that I had just left from the summer. And look at this. So I put the compost tea on it as well. A little bug activity there, but... I mean, this thing's coming back to life. That's the Leela avocado. Yeah, oh yeah, we got owls here. There's another Mexican sunflower. Um, I forget what the name of it. It's a uh, very fragrant, I can't think of it. Anyway, more uh, Mexican sunflower. There's another avocado tree, one year old. And I got it at Pete's Nursery. Now, here's a rock star. I did put the compost tea on this as well. This is Mexican, I'm sorry, this is actually longevity spinach, excuse me, longevity spinach. Now the superfood, edible leaves. This is good stuff right here. We put it in our soups and saute. I actually make a superfood calzone that has the longevity spinach in it. All right, wood fired oven calzone. There's a katuk. That's a white peach tree. Oh, look at these flowers. This is a cranberry hibiscus. Look at the flowers coming on. This thing's gotten out of control. Look at the longevity spinach. It's just taking over. This is a plum tree. This is a red Turk's cap hibiscus, edible flower. Grandkids love this, basically. You can just grab that and you pull that end off right there and you could eat it. So I had a hard time pulling off, but there you go, right there. It's really sweet. Great in a salad. And there is the original Thai dwarf mulberry tree and sweet almond. That's, that's what this is here. It's a sweet almond tree. And the aroma... I mean, it just makes it a joy to sit out here in the garden and smell this when the wind's blowing. It also attracts a lot of the pollinators. So there you go, as promised, our one week update. I'm trying not to make this video too long as it's just an update. But uh, if you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And I'm going to go ahead and next Friday, I will be filming the week two update to see how well our compost tea is working here and just to rub it in I'm going to show you if anybody loves broccoli Rob that's a winner right there I can't wait to eat more of this okay we're back inside the greenhouse it's now wow it's about 77 degrees already so it's warming up quick I gotta lose this jacket all right primo I Primo and I want to thank you for watching this one week update. We hope to see you next time back here at the greenhouse. And remember, leave me alone. We're busy farming. Okay. Thanks for watching.